Welcome to this service to mark the World Day of Remembrance for road traffic victims. My name is Vaughan Roberts. I am the Vicar of St Mary's Warwick and I'm speaking from that church in which our service was to have been held but has now moved online because of lockdown and the coronavirus. Nevertheless, we can still join together with a common purpose to remember those who have been killed on our roads and those injured in body, mind or spirit. We will hear from those who've been affected by road traffic accidents, those who have responsibility for road safety and those who seek to provide support and comfort to those seeking to come to terms with the trauma they've experienced. We'll begin with a brief moment of quiet to hold in our hearts those who are special to us and who we miss in our lives. And then St Mary's Choir will sing Palestrina's setting of the words from the opening verse of Psalm 41. Seek good My name is Philip Seckham and I am the Police and Crime Commissioner for Warwickshire. This ceremony of remembrance is the first of what I hope will become an annual event in Warwickshire to help remember all those who have lost their lives on our roads. 
It falls on the World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims, which is held every year on the third Sunday of November. Many of you watching online today will have had the heartbreaking experience of being told that a son or daughter, husband or wife, mother or father has been seriously injured or even worse, killed in a road collision. The impact on family and friends in every road death is immense and long lasting. The ripple effect among whole communities can also be very significant. And that's why having a platform like this to bring people together in remembrance is something I've been keen to establish here in Warwickshire. Whilst we cannot physically be together today, I hope that this online event will provide comfort to anyone grieving for a loved one while also giving a focus for all of the work that has been done to reduce the numbers of people who suffer this terrible experience. The sad fact remains that more people lose their lives or suffer serious injuries on our roads than are killed through serious violence. This highlights just how important improving road safety is and while we have made some significant progress over the years, every fatality or serious injury is always one too many. It's why I have made improving the safety of our roads one of the key priorities in my police and crime plan for Warwickshire and why I work to ensure the police and all partners give this a similar priority. I chair the multi-agency Warwickshire Road Safety Partnership, which brings together all the relevant agencies across the county to coordinate activity. You will hear from representatives from some of these agencies on how they are working to improve the overall picture later in this service. For my part, I've put extensive additional funding in place to give targeted support to organisations and campaigns which look to protect some of our most vulnerable road users. In the last 12 months, I have made more than half a million pounds available through my Road Safety Fund for a range of educational and enforcement initiatives. These have included schemes aimed at young drivers, motorcycle riders, cyclists, and indeed those at the very beginning of their lives as road users. Schemes to tackle speeding, drink and drug driving and the use of mobile phones whilst at the wheel have also benefited. Enforcement activity has been stepped up to tackle those irresponsible motorists who pose a danger to others. My fund has helped to establish Warwickshire Police's Commercial Vehicle Unit which has been very successful in targeting offences involving some of the largest vehicles on our roads, with particular emphasis on the network of motorways and trunk roads which crisscross our county. I've also supported the establishment of additional community speed watch groups and purchased new equipment to help police catch and prosecute dangerous drivers more effectively. I'm also keenly aware of the support that families need of those killed on our roads. While our police family liaison officers do an amazing job in the immediate aftermath of a collision, I know that having access to independent specialist support on a longer term basis can be invaluable. That's why I fund BREAK, the national road safety charity, to provide Warwickshire with its own expert on the ground support for families bereaved by a road crash. This is a national first for break and something that I'm proud to be able to set in place. Our independent road bereavement advocate provides families with help to cope better with their emotional and physical symptoms, overcome practical challenges 
and look after their own well-being. The role works alongside a helpline, providing a listening ear from day one onwards. My final message is that we can all help to make a difference by being better road users. Whether that's as drivers on two wheels, or four, cyclists, horse riders, or pedestrians, we all have a duty to use our roads safely and to look after one another. Taking our time, being aware of what's around us and the hazards that might cause us difficulty are all part of ensuring that as a community, we are doing everything we can to reach a place with less death, injury and unnecessary heartache. Trudy, um, trying to put it into to words, she she was an earth angel. Um, ask anybody that knew her. She was she would help anybody. Um, stories that have come back to me since she was since she's gone. Um, you know, people that were being bullied, she would stick up for them. Um, helping anybody out she was funny she was the life and soul she was my my rock she was my my everything she uh, yeah she's just just everything a mother could possibly want from a child and I know a lot of mothers say that which you know they are. Children are what you want them to be. But, like I say, everybody that knew her, everybody that come into contact with her, from being very, very tiny to up until her last days, everybody loved her. She, her persona was just caring, loving, funny. She... She would light up a room as soon as she walked into it. Um, and the rooms are all dark now. It's just, just hard. And it's, um, it's uh, like that for everybody that knew her. Like I say, friends, family, people that just knew her as an acquaintance. You know, everybody, everybody just misses her. It's the shock of it. Um, you know, one minute I was coming back from a particularly bad weekend in Birmingham with some friends. Uh, sat here, heard all the ambulances and the sirens and heard the helicopters and knew it was for the kids. I just knew it was for them. And then when the FLO came and said that Trudy had been in an accident, and I just said, yeah, I know. I know she has. I says, how bad is it? Which hospital has she gone to? And she just shook her head. And no parent should have to hear that. Um, losing parents, grandparents, it's the order of things. Losing a child of any age, whether they be uh, miscarried or whether they be 50, 60, 70 years old. It's not the way it should be, you know, and... You can't come to terms with that. You get on with every day. 
you have a lot of people around you. I have amazing family. I have amazing friends. And you wake up every morning, like I say. You go to work. You do what you have to do. Um, because you have no choice. I was not given the choice as to whether I would lose my daughter or not. And us parents just have to get on with it. It's hard. It's horrible. It's the worst thing in the world that can happen to you. But we have to go on for our kids. When it first happened, um, we had the FLOs come round. My particular FLO at the beginning was amazing. She was brilliant. And my sister, oh, I wouldn't be here without my sister Jane. She found out a lot of things, um, all the different charities and, and that that could help me and help her and help the rest of the family and friends. And there was crews, there's compassionate friends, um, there's the... Um, break the road safety charity and when it first happened you get a folder from break um, that the police give to you and it's got everything in there everything you could possibly need and all the questions answered that you're gonna ask um and yeah i mean they're there if you need them but you have to decide to need them it gets to a point where you do need the help and everything is there for you. Uh, it's just having somebody that can look for it for you because I couldn't have done it. Um, like I say, I was lucky with my sister. She's she's done it all. She's been absolutely brilliant. She is now my earth angel. Um, and the general public, you know, people around Atherston are amazing, absolutely brilliant. The, the love that has gone into it for all the families of that accident um, because I lost Ryan as well, which was Trudy's partner. Um, he was such a, a lovely boy. Really, really, really was. I mean, those two per perfect soulmates. Um, so you see, that was my future. Died that day. She was my only child. And... Uh, Yeah, I'll never, I'll never have their wedding, their children, my grandchildren, all of that's gone now because of some stupid road accident that was not their fault. And that makes it harder. You know, if I could blame one of them for it it would be easier but i can't remembrance it's all we have left is to remember and i think we are lucky nowadays with all the the technical stuff that everybody has with the videos and the cameras and the phones and that we have a lot more stuff to help us remember. Um, I feel lucky that I've got videos of Trudy May and Ryan and photos and things to help us remember. Um, but remembrance of anybody that's gone before us is... A really big thing. Um, remembrance is keeping them alive, keeping them with us, and that makes it easier. Um, I think we have to remember the stories. Somebody said to me once that 
they will always be remembered until the last person that knew them dies. And that's a really horrific thing to think. So with my, um, my great niece who never met Trudy, um, we just found out that Anna was expecting Sophia when uh, we had Trudy's funeral. And I still talk about Trudy with Sophia. I still tell her little bits and if she does something that's like her, because she is quite a lot like her, um, I'll always talk about Trudy, you know, and we all do, because even though she never saw her, you know, she'll hopefully remember the stories about her and be able to point them out and like silly little things. She might say, oh, well, I was told that Trudy May did this when she was younger to her children, you know, and grandchildren. And hopefully Trudy's name will go on like that. But this is like the remembrance part of it. You know, like I say, this is all we have left is the remembrance of the people that have gone. When I was a young constable, uh, around 30 years ago, uh, I can remember being called to an incident where a truck had left the road uh, in the early hours of the morning. It was a night shift coming home from work. Uh, we assumed the driver had, had fallen asleep after a, a heavy night's work. Uh, and the truck left the road uh, and three people lay dead uh, in, in really a, a horrific accident when they hit an oak tree. Uh, and that memory and the subsequent contact with victims, the families uh, and the devastation and how the ripple effect went out and impacted on people has always stayed with me. When, when we have one of those either fatalities or serious collisions in Warwickshire, clearly a lot of time and energy is spent by the force uh, investigating what happened and providing support for the affected loved ones and family. And we have dedicated family liaison officers who will be with the family at the various stages, uh, sometimes through to court cases. Uh, and that's really important to the families uh, that, that they are kept updated uh, and know at every stage where the court case is at. Uh, and it's a lot of energy and time for our officers. And it's a lot of emotional energy, not just for the families, which is obviously the main concern but the officers that have to, to deal with not just the accident on the day, but the, the, the family upset, grief uh, and horror at what's gone on. And that takes its toll uh, on our officers uh, as well as indeed on the family. But it's an important aspect of the job and, and, and something clearly we will never shy away from doing. Each year in Warwickshire, we have over 300 people killed or seriously injured in road traffic collisions within the county. So that works out at just under one serious collision a day. Of those, uh, around 30 or so result in fatalities. Uh, and every fatality and every serious injury is one too many on our roads in Warwickshire. So here in Warwickshire, we're determined to reduce down, preferably to zero in a perfect world that the serious injuries and deaths that we have on our roads. And to do that, we've been investing in, into roads policing uh, in the last two to three years in Warwickshire to make sure there's more capability out there to do enforcement, because we know enforcement is a, is a key part in, in reducing uh, serious injury collisions on, on our roads. Uh, and we know that around two thirds of, of collisions involve excess speed in particular, but also things like people not wearing seatbelts, perhaps using a phone 
behind the wheel uh, and what have you. Uh, and we need to reduce those down to reduce the misery uh, and the hurt that is caused. And I always think there's a real contrast. So I, I talked about over 30 fatalities a year in Warwickshire, where we have normally less than 10 homicides. So three times as many people are killed on our roads as actually are subject to a homicide in Warwickshire, and that just can't be right. Uh, and the impact is no less devastating on families, whether they've lost a loved one through homicide or they've lost a loved one through a, a collision on our roads. So anything that we can all do collectively in partnership to reduce that heartache to families and people has got to be a good thing. Hello, my name is Andy Crump. I'm the portfolio holder for Warwickshire County Council's Road Safety, Fire and Rescue, Flooding and Community Safety teams. Warwickshire County Council has the primary responsibility for road safety and we take this responsibility extremely seriously. Last year there was around about 350 people killed or seriously injured on Warwickshire's roads and that is far too many, even one is far too many. And we are trying to reduce with our partners the number of people actually killed or seriously injured. Long term behaviour change is the key to this. Only recently, not too far away in Oxfordshire, tragically a, a young mother and three children were killed in an accident leaving a husband and partner and uh, a young child still critically injured. It made the headlines and was in people's consciousness for a, for a short while, uh, but now people have forgotten about it. It's consigned to yesterday's news. Yet the family and friends and relatives of all those involved will have to live with that for the rest of, that, like, rest of their lives. The trauma will be ongoing. I do not wish anybody else to have to go through that. Um, and I, I do send all my condolences to, to the family and friends of all involved. Warwickshire County Council will be introducing several initiatives, one of which is the Safer in Warwickshire initiative, aimed at all local schools in our county. The scheme will encourage more people to go to school either by walking or by cycling, which will inevitably reduce the amount of traffic on the roads. We've all seen the congestion around schools in the north, south, east and west of our county. And as many people have said to me, it is an accident waiting to happen. And I thoroughly agree with that. So if we can encourage long-term behaviour change, reduce the amount of people travelling to school by car, it will hopefully have a positive effect on these high numbers we have in Warwickshire. It's happened in, in many other areas. Who would have thought that 12 months ago it would be the norm to wear masks? And also, uh, no people can't smoke are uh, taking their children to school. So these things do happen, but they do take time and it involves a lot of partnership working. The County Council will also be introducing average speed cameras in four locations uh, in, in all parts of the county to again reduce accident numbers. Uh, and it has a proven effect recently in, in Coventry. I think the London Road has seen accidents reduced by 80% over the last 12 months. Uh, working with our partners in the police involving enforcement and education, Warwickshire County Council's road safety team will also help to educate people of all ages because it's not just children, not just young people who are victims of these uh, awful incidents. So we do need to make sure everybody is still aware that uh, they take the proper safety precautions, whether they're walking or actually in the car themselves. Warwickshire Fire and Rescue Service, which is under my portfolio, does a great work keeping our residents safe and well. And they are often uh, first on the scene at some awful accidents. They realise things must change and they've come up with several different options trying to initiatives to try and help reduce the numbers. The Fatal Four, Biker Down initiatives have all been well received by members of the public. It is fitting that the World Day of Remembrance for Road Traffic Victims falls in November, which is worldwide month of remembrance. And we do need to remember of all the people who've sadly lost their lives over the last few years in Warwickshire. We do not want people to have to go through that again. 
So it is important that people do take some responsibility themselves when out either walking, out on their bikes, or more importantly, when they're driving uh, their cars and motor vehicles. One moment of distraction could lead to horrendous consequences, including loss of life. So please take care, please take responsibility, please look out for other people, and please be aware of other road users. Hello all, my name's Kieran Amos and I'm the Chief Fire Officer of Warwickshire Fire and Rescue Service. And I'd like to take a moment just to talk about the impacts of road traffic collisions from a fire and rescue service perspective. So the first thing that we know of, a, of an incident coming in is the bells go down at the fire station. That alerts our crews to respond and they'll see a message saying road traffic collision, person's trapped. Our crews are extremely well trained and well equipped to deal with all sorts of scenarios for road traffic collision and on routes they'll be thinking about the scenarios and what they'll do. On arrival at the scene they assess the incident very quickly and work with simultaneous activity to carry out extrications that are definitely guided and directed by uh, those at the incident from our ambulance service. We work with other emergency responders to create the best effect at that incident. And then once the casualty is extricated, they are invariably handed over to the paramedics who take the casualties away to hospital. And very often that's the last we'll ever hear of what's occurred for that person and the story that goes on for them. Now, from personal experience, many of these incidents stay with you and there's a significant effect on the crews and the impact upon them in terms of having to attend these, these types of incidents. But these pale into insignificance compared to the families and loved ones of those who've been killed or injured through road traffic collisions. That's why we're absolutely passionate about road safety and doing our best to ensure we can drive down these incidents. We need to learn as much as possible about how they occur. And our pledge is that we will work with our partners to try and drive these incidents down and make Warwickshire the safest place it can be to work, live and indeed travel through. We work with all sorts of partners to ensure that we're looking at all of the causes, potential causes for road traffic collisions and that's looking at engineered solutions and prevention messages and we try and change people's behaviours. So we have a responsibility for education, particularly for young people, so that even before they start driving they understand the potential consequences of poor behaviours when travelling on the roads. Now this is a moment for us to take some time and think about all of those people that have been involved in a road traffic collision but also all of those loved ones who have also been impacted by that including the emergency responders but foremost the families and loved ones so if we can just pause for a moment and think of them think of the consequences and think of the impacts upon all of those people from one incident We've attended 125 incidents this year, and that's 125 too many. So we will do everything we can to drive down road traffic collisions. Our thoughts are with you and everyone that's been affected. Thank you. We have come together to remember the victims of road accidents. Those who have been killed or injured their families and their friends, the rescue services and all involved in the work of caring and healing. But in one sense, we're all victims of road trauma, for we're all affected and hurt by the annual toll of suffering on our roads. So we offer this very sad fact of our modern world to God acknowledging our own share in what is wrong, asking God to fill us with his redeeming grace and love, continuing to remember before God all who are on our hearts, those whom we have known and loved, and those whose names are unknown to us, those who have lost their lives on our roads, 
and those who have been hurt in body, mind or spirit, and all whose lives have been damaged in any way. Let us commend them to God's infinite mercy and goodness. 